What'd you make of that fight, uh, Eddie, against Pitbull and Rowley? I'm not really sure how Rowley ever became a world champion, to be honest with you. But fair play to him. I mean, and you have to respect him. Like, he made his money. Like, he got it. Um, and the one thing you can't deny about Rowley, he's got plenty of heart. I mean, he got absolutely battered. He never actually went down. Yo, that was a crazy fight. That was a, that was a bar. Did Rowley come back from that, Teddy? Huh? Did Rowley come back from that? He took a beating a little bit at the end. He took a little beating, but I think they stopped in time, so they kind of saved his career. Isaac Cruz, following his impressive knockout victory over Raleigh Romero, has responded to Romero's claims of cheating in their highly anticipated bout. Cruz, known for his aggressive fighting style and relentless pressure, delivered a stunning performance that left Romero on the canvas and sparked controversy both inside and outside the ring. In the aftermath of the fight, Romero voiced his grievances, alleging that Cruz had engaged in foul play and questioning the legitimacy of Cruz's victory. Romero's claims of cheating have since stirred debate among fans, pundits, and fellow fighters, with many expressing skepticism about the validity of his accusations. In response, Isaac Cruz has vehemently denied Romero's cheating claims, asserting that his victory was the result of hard work, skill, and superior boxing ability. Cruz emphasized that he prepared extensively for the fight and entered the ring with a clear game plan, which he executed to perfection on fight night. However, here is what Oscar De La Hoya said about it. Rollies, you d getting knocked out. Focus on your opponents instead of focusing on me. Cruz's team has also come to his defense, dismissing Romero's allegations as baseless and a desperate attempt to deflect from his defeat. They have pointed to the knockout footage and the referee's decision to stop the fight as clear evidence of Cruz's dominance and the fairness of the contest. After the match, Rolando Romero shared his thoughts, crafting a poignant message that beautifully summed up his personal journey and emotions. He said, I came into this fight prepared to show the world my heart and my skills, and I felt like I displayed that on Saturday night. I never once got knocked down, let alone knocked out. And the ref had to save me from myself because I'm fearless and got cold balls of steel and wanted to keep on fighting and putting on a show until the end. He also extended his gratitude towards Amazon Prime, PBC, his team, sponsors and fans, reinforcing the community's role in his journey. Concluding with a vow, Romero promised, I promise I will be back better and stronger than ever to further prove to myself and naysayers that I belong at the top level of the sport with the best of them. Echoing the resounding chorus of endorsements, Floyd Mayweather's gesture of pride towards Romero struck a profound chord within the boxing fraternity. Floyd Mayweather extended a guiding light to Rolando Romero, illuminating a path forward. His Instagram post not only honored Romero, but also laid out a clear direction for the journey ahead. Mayweather said, Hold your head up high. I'm incredibly proud of you for achieving the remarkable feat of becoming a two-time world champion in less than 18 fights, all without any prior amateur background and in just 14 years of total fighting experience. In this journey we call life, you'll win and you'll lose. That's the game. But in life, we all face losses, including myself. So remember, when people try to knock you down, don't let it keep you there. Get back up, stay true to yourself, and acknowledge just how much you've accomplished. In the lead up to the showdown, Romero was all bravado, yet when the moment of truth arrived, he failed to deliver. Despite his valiant attempts, Romero found himself outmatched by the relentless aggression of Pitbull Cruz. Raleigh Romero first grabbed attention in August 2020 when he secured a contentious, unanimous decision win against Jackson Marinez. Despite widespread belief among fans that he hadn't earned the victory, Romero managed to escape with the win. Following this controversial bout, Romero stepped into the ring twice in 2021, claiming two seven thief round TKO victories. In May 2022, Raleigh Romero stepped into the spotlight for his momentous showdown against boxing sensation Gervonta Tank Davis. Romero showcased his skills impressively, dominating the early rounds with his sharp performance. However, his momentum was halted abruptly in the sixth round when he succumbed to a devastating counter left-hand shot, ending his aspirations for victory. Although Romero faced defeat in the ring, the aftermath saw Raleigh's credibility soar to new heights. Following his loss against Tank Davis, the outspoken fighter, Rolando Romero, 
made a bold move by transitioning to the 140-pound division, where he fought for the vacant WBA Super Lightweight World title. During his clash with Ismael Barroso for the WBA Championship title, Romero found himself in a precarious situation in the third round when a precise left-hand strike from Barroso floored him. Despite this setback, Romero managed to weather the storm and persevere through the round. However, in the ninth round, he turned the tide with a powerful left hook, swiftly followed by a forceful downward push that forced Barroso to the canvas, earning Romero a crucial knockdown. Barroso rose from his seat, and amidst the ongoing altercation, Romero relentlessly advanced, driving Barroso into a tight corner. With rapid succession, Romero unleashed a barrage of strikes. Despite the majority of them failing to find their mark, referee Tony Weeks intervened, calling an end to the match. Following a contentious victory to secure the WBA Super Lightweight World Championship, Raleigh Romero geared up for his inaugural title defense against Isaac Cruz. The much-anticipated showdown was slated as the co-main event of the premier PBC pay-per-view spectacle, exclusively available on Amazon Prime. During the initial bout, Pitbull Cruz wasted no time launching a barrage of overhand rights and lefts, relentlessly pushing forward. Although most of Cruz's strikes failed to find their mark, everything changed in the closing moments of the first round when a precisely timed counter left hand shot from Cruz caught Romero off guard, causing his knees to buckle. As the seventh round neared its end, Pitbull Cruz took control, relentlessly advancing on Raleigh Romero and unleashing a flurry of strikes. The momentum carried into the eighth round, with Cruz delivering a series of powerful blows that left Romero struggling to defend himself. Ultimately, the referee intervened, ending the bout in Cruz's favor. Despite Romero's valiant effort, he simply couldn't counter Cruz's relentless assault. With the fight concluded, the spotlight now shifts to Romero's next move. What lies ahead for him after this defeat? Now that Isak Cruz has put the finishing touches on Roley crayon eating Romero, um, Isak Cruz is now the official WBA Super uh, Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. He earned it rightfully so. He still doesn't really have a jab. I did see some of the highlights, some of the footage. He still doesn't really have a jab. He's throwing haymakers and bombs, bombs, bolo punches, overhand rights, wide hooks all night long. But he knew that he could pretty much do that with uh, Roland Romero because Roland Romero don't, don't know how to box. He's not a boxer. Featuring a lineup boasting talents like Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, Subriel Matias, and Ryan Garcia, the super lightweight division at 140 pounds stands out as one of boxing's most stacked weight classes. While Romero packs a punch, the question remains, does he possess the finesse and ring IQ required to take on any of the elite contenders in the top 10 of this division? One potential avenue for Romero to explore is to venture into the 140 pound division once more, perhaps for a final bout by challenging a fellow boxer who recently experienced a defeat. A compelling matchup could emerge between Raleigh Romero and Regis Prograce. Alternatively, Romero might consider bulking up by seven pounds and ascending to the welterweight division, which is comparatively less saturated with contenders. One avenue Romero might explore is dipping his toes into the 140-pound division once more, perhaps facing a fellow boxer seeking redemption after a recent loss. Consider the prospect of a bout between Raleigh Romero and Regis Prograce, an intriguing clash of styles. Alternatively, Romero could opt to bulk up by seven pounds and ascend to the relatively less congested welterweight ranks, opening up new vistas for his career. Meanwhile, in the realm of 2024's championship victories, few resonate as deeply as Isaac Pitbull Cruz's triumph in Las Vegas. He seized a resounding eighth round victory over Rolando Romero, a figure often met with mixed sentiments amplifying Cruz's popularity even further. Cruz, hailing from the vibrant streets of Mexico City, seized the coveted WBA Junior Welterweight Championship with a commanding performance. He refused to give Romero an inch of breathing space, unleashing relentless pressure right from the opening bell until he gracefully sealed the deal with a spectacular finish. After the fight, Cruz said, I was prepared for this. I wasn't here to just fight. 
I was here to terminate him and make him eat everything he said. I am not here just as a very dangerous fighter. I now have a title that's backing me up. Despite a strong initial performance marked by a decisive left-hand shot in the first round and dominant control from rounds two to six, there remains widespread skepticism regarding the outcome. This sentiment is shared even by the renowned boxer Claressa Shields. When boxer Ishe Oluwa Kamau Ali Smith said, whatever judge had Rolly up needs to be banned from boxing. F asterisk C King ridiculous, undisputed middleweight champion, Shields also went off on the judge. Replying to the post, she wrote, Man, can you say corrupt? What prompts Ali Smith and Shields to hold this belief? It stems from Cruz's decisive control over the fight's tempo right from the outset. This established the context for the bout, marking Raleigh's inaugural defense following his championship victory last year over Ismael Barroso. Cruz maintained his dominance consistently, culminating in a significant moment when he knocked down Raleigh. Despite unanimous judge favor, one dissented in favor of Raleigh sparking considerable controversy in the aftermath of the match. Upon the unveiling of the Cruz vs. Raleigh match scorecard, spectators were left astounded by the figures displayed. Amidst the two judges' tallies favoring Cruz with scores of 63, 69, and 64-68, a dissenting opinion emerged from Chris Flores, who scored at 66, 65 in favor of Raleigh. Had the match not concluded in a knockout and had these divergent scores persisted, the 25-year-old Mexican pugilist would have still clinched victory, albeit through a split decision. Nonetheless, this outcome left a bitter taste for many in the audience. Meanwhile, Regis Progres stands out as one of the most forthright figures in contemporary boxing. In the latest post by The Boxing Voice, they asked an interesting question to the boxing fans. What's your thoughts on this matchup? With this caption, they added the picture of Regis Progreus next to Raleigh Romero. Well, when Progreus came across this post, he disagreed with the matchup, as he wants something bigger for himself. He wrote, Fuck Raleigh, I want Pitbull for the belt. So he's made it clear that he wants to become a champion once again. Progreus might next take on Dalton Smith in addition to Cruz. Frank Smith, a promoter for Matchroom, is pushing for this match. Frank Smith, the British impresario, is strategically propelling his protege Dalton Smith towards a swift ascent to a world championship opportunity, eyeing Regis Progress as the looming contender. Smith orchestrated an impressive fifth-round knockout over the seasoned Jose Zapita in the previous weekend's bout. However, doubts persist regarding Smith's preparedness to contend at the highest echelons of the sport. Despite the victory marking a notable progression, observers noted Smith's challenges in facing the seasoned 34-year-old Zapita. Enter Regis Progres, a former two-division champion with a reputation for explosiveness. Smith's promoter acknowledges the risk, admitting to ESPN, Regis Progres is a great fight. That would be an amazing fight. We represent Regis as well, but that would show the level that Dalton Smith is at. But there are lots of big fights to be made. Let's see. Oh, no, no, Rolly didn't overestimate him. And this is, this is boxing. Shit happens. This is boxing. It's not a, he didn't overestimate him. He was in phenomenal shape. Um, he, he did some good things in the fight. So the discussions are still on a preliminary level. As fans and pundits continue to dissect the events of the Cruz versus Romero fight and speculate about future matchups, one thing is clear. The world of boxing remains as unpredictable and captivating as ever. The drama, controversy, and sheer talent on display serve as a testament to the sport's enduring appeal and the indomitable spirit of its athletes. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.